In part one of this tutorial, I showed you how to create a, a lip sync uh, two dimensional animation uh, in Flash or Animate. And in this tutorial, we're going to take that animation that we created and we turn it into a JPEG sequence and apply it to this rig called Johnny the Box. Now, I had to do a couple of things to this rig to make it work. Um, I was having some issues with the uh, Tune Renderer. It did the, the kind of the dark outlines like a cartoon character. So I had to delete that in the um, Outliner because Maya 2016 was having some problems with it. And I looked online and saw that uh, other people were having issues as well. So I think it may be a bug. I've also taken the UV map of the box and laid it out just like uh, that template was in Flash. So it should be very easy to apply that. Um, animation that we've created to this box and then we can animate this box three-dimensionally as well. So the first step is we need to get the uh, texture of that animation onto the box. So I'm gonna right click on one of these uh, boxes down here to open up my, my window that's Hypershade and Perspective. Hypershade is our materials creator. Um, it allows us to apply a different, a lot of different kinds of materials to our 3D objects and in the one that I've provided below, the very first option is a Lambert, or a uh, matte, not shiny material, and I've called it Mouths. And on that one, right now the color, if you'll notice if you change the color, it's already been applied to the box, and so you can see that color change as you move it around on there. And you can double click on this to bring it up in the attribute editor and change the attributes of that material. And what we'll do is add a node to its color this checkerboard box here when I click on it it will open up a window called create render node and that gives me a lot of different options that I can apply to the diffuse the color map of this object um, instead of just a single color and I'm going to choose file so I click on file and it opens up the node for file and all I have to do is where it says image name I can click on this folder next to it and go and search for the uh, JPEG sequence that I created before. So I'm going to search for that. And I put it all in a folder because it'll create hundreds of JPEG files when you create a sequence. And what I want to do is just choose the first one. So I'm going to click on the first one and say open. And you should see it apply. If you don't see it apply, you may have to select the body geometry in the outliner under Windows Outliner and press uh, 6 to make it visible. That's the um, the button you press to turn on the shaders. Uh, and then all I have to do after that is underneath where it says image name, you'll see a checkbox for use image sequence. And I can click on that, and now it should play my animation as I go. So now every frame in Flash should correspond to a frame in Maya. And I can see that. I may have to extend the length of, of uh, the frames that I'm seeing. If I type in a number here, that will extend it. Mine was 100 frames or so. So now, I think 94 frames after frame 89, it goes away because the texture's ended. So I'll just go ahead and do 88 is the last frame. And now I can animate this box. If I'd like to have my sound again, um, the only way that Maya will accept uh, sound being imported is if it's a WAV file and it's 16-bit. So if both of those things are true and you can always um, export it as a different kind of file. I can go to File Import, find the file that I was using, and when I import it, it should automatically appear in my timeline. And I can scrub it. And depending on this, this also seems like a Maya bug, but sometimes you can hit play and actually hear it in real respect, time. Frank, how can I do sometimes you can't because um, I, well, I don't know why. I've looked online, and uh, it seems like a lot of people uh, have that issue, too. So you may or may not see that. Now I can go in. I'm just going to switch back to my single perspective view, maybe minimize my attribute editor. Now I can go in and start animating um, the movements of the box with the mouth. And, and um, this has a bunch of eye controllers, too. So I can select these. The first thing I want to do is set keys. So I'm clicking on each of them and pressing S to set a key at one, and I'll probably want to change what one is, but there are, so I'm going through and pressing S, which creates a keyframe on each of these controllers. This large square is your overall movement controller. When I press W on this one, it'll move the entire rig. Um, this top one here is a squash and stretch. For the top part, you can also press E and rotate it. 
and it's really it's set up really well to accept all sorts of different kinds of movements. Um, this inside rig here can also be rotated and moved. And so now I can animate this uh, this box doing the uh, the acting of the scene that I picked from. So whether it was a song or or a movie quote, now I can can animate that. So I would start by chunking it out. I would start by just kind of getting the overall movement from this large controller here. So maybe I'll have him move. Uh, so I move forward. Go ahead and turn off the sound. So I'll say maybe like it. He'll kind of angle back a little bit here first. And when I go forward in time, in the timeline to which frame I want it to be changed, then I move it to that point and I press S again to uh, set a keyframe to basically record all of those changes that I've made. Then Maya will figure out all the steps between those. So now I can, I can keep going here and I'll, maybe I'll have him jump forward here now. So just a quick little hop in the air. And after I get that overall movement, all I want I is to earn your respect for and figuring out all of the, the more precise animations. So when he's about to jump, I'll probably have him kind of lean back a little bit and bend down. And as he jumps, I'll start to have him maybe lean forward and start to stretch. This rig really makes it easy to do those sort of things. I have to make sure after I've gone forward in my timeline and I've made my change, I want to remember to hit S every time. If I forget, it will not record the changes I've made. So maybe here at the top of its arc, I can kind of get it back down to regular. Oops, and I almost forgot to hit S there, so I want to make sure to hit S when I make that change. And so I'm basically just animating it just like I did with the bouncing ball in the earlier assignment. Uh, this is a really easy and fun to use rig, I think. Um, so feel free to have some fun with it. And then when you're done with it, the last part of this tutorial, I'll explain how um, we'll bring it into a video editing program. I do my um, editing in Premiere, which is an Adobe program, and there I can do the final add of the audio, uh, do any edits that I need to, and then export it as a movie file.